Hey guys, welcome to the Joe Jaguar Show one more time. For you guys that don't know me, my name is Joe Jaguar. I've been interested or I got into the hobby in about 1993 when a was huge news, I think worldwide, about 1993 summerish, uh, where a comet passed by Jupiter, it was gonna swing by the solar system and then come back and slam into Jupiter and it broke up into 21 pieces and it left 21 scars the size of Earth. So if Jupiter was not there and it hit Earth, um, we would have been annihilated. Now also, it took a full year, 13 months, for after the news for it to actually happen. That sucker was traveling well, back then, the first estimates were near 300,000 kilometers an hour now, and it still took a year. So that's what got me interested, like, holy cow, how big is our solar system? When we talk about in terms of, like, speed, normally think about a car going 100 kilometers an hour, pretty fast, you know, a, a plane uh, going, you know, 500 uh you know to 700 kilometers an hour a jet maybe you know 900 but anyway when you're talking about 300,000 kilometers and it took a year now you're getting an idea how big our solar system is anyway that got me interested in astronomy and so it's my 29th year uh right now and two and a half years ago i decided to share my knowledge with you guys watching uh, I started a YouTube channel and I'm over 1,100 subscribers, but I can see 90% or more of people who actually watch me are not subscribed. It's actually very common. For some reason, people watch your videos, but they just don't want to subscribe even though it doesn't cost anything. Anyway, today what I have for you guys, this is a 127 millimeter Max Sutov or Mac Cassegrain, uh, five inch. This is a five inch refractor. What would be the pros and cons of each? You can definitely see here. Let's get this video going. Okay, so first of all, if portability is your number one goal, then something like this might be best for you. Now they also make this in it called a Schmidt Cassegrain. When you look at the front, let me see if I can get you closer and I'll show you. So this one here has like a curved lens at the front uh, where the light hits the mirror in the back, bounces to this silver spot, or we call it a secondary mirror, and then bounces it again. Uh, and then you look at it over here. So it actually travels like three times. If it didn't do that, this guy would actually be longer than this guy. So hopefully you uh, understand that. Now there are some trade-offs in doing that. One, uh, this mirror is 92% reflectivity. Now, most average mass-produced mirrors are about 88%. This one is actually better quality at 92, but the best mirrors are max at about 94%. So this is getting close. So by it having a central obstruction, that spot there, it does block a little bit of light um, and then lowers contrast a little bit. So that you have to, that's what you compromise for having such a small package and portability. Um, this guy is also good if you want to see both nighttime stuff and daytime stuff. A lot of people like bird watching because again, it's very portable. This is a five inch, which is a little bit big for bird watching, but you can really zoom in really high power. Now, just to give you an idea, the um, focal length of this guy is 1500 millimeter focal length. That is pretty long. Um, so that is about, uh, I believe F12. Um, so it gives you pretty high power views and fairly good image quality and contrast. Again, um, if that's what you're looking for, this could be great. Now, why would somebody choose this guy? Now, they're both exactly 127 millimeters, so they're both five inch. 
Now this one does not bounce it back and forth. This is just a lens uh, in the front and then you look there, your traditional refractor. This is not those expensive type of lenses that we call ED or APO or APO, however some people pronounce it, apochromatic, right? Uh, which is the full name. Um, this is just your regular acromat. Now, the difference in this guy, and let's not talk about the mounts, because really, I'm just talking about the telescopes, not the mounts, because you can put these on any mount that you like. Um, so the refractor is just basically, I'll show you the front because it's only fair. Uh, this is a newer style, so it has a lens there, and as you can see by those six screws, adjustable, where some refractors are not. Okay, and basically you just look all the way down there. So the benefits of this kind and why a lot of people love refractors is because the refractor is the sharpest kind of telescope per inch. It is also the most expensive kind per inch as well. So this one will probably outperform this guy a little bit. And the reason is this has no central obstruction, so it's not blocking any light, even though this one is only probably blocking 5%, which is not much at all, but I just want you guys to know the information. So this one has no central obstruction, uh, and this type of lens or the refractor is more efficient in getting the light to the eyepiece, which means about 99% of the incoming light will go to your eye. Where this one, again, even though it has a much uh, higher grade mirror at 92%, you're losing about 8% of light there. And then you're losing a, a little bit uh, from the central obstruction and then a little bit of contrast. But again, it is not gonna be dramatic. It's gonna be minor, but you should know. Some people that want every proton of light that the telescope gathers and collects and focuses and that's why some people would prefer this type of guy even though it's three times longer now this one even though looks a lot longer focal length is actually shorter this one is actually 1200 millimeter focal length where this one is 1500 millimeter focal length so this one is still 300 millimeter focal length less now the downfalls of this guy because it's not using that high high grade lens um, so just to give you an idea because it's just an acromat a uh, doublet acromat you could probably let's say retail in Canada you could probably get that guy for about 700 now if it had the first level ED you know that probably would add another thousand and then if it was a triplet refractor uh, it probably would add then another thousand on top of that thousand so that's how expensive refractors can get but some people love the pure images. They call it uh, white diamonds on black velvet background. So it is, again, the most sharpest type that you can get. It is the most efficient that gathers the most light or lets the most light go to your eye. Uh, but of course, it does cost the most per telescope. Now, this guy here, probably a five inch, you know, around the $600 Canadian, uh, retail, uh, I would say roughly around there, six to seven hundred. So it's pr pretty comparable. So what you have to decide, or what you realize then, is even though this is a five-inch Maxutov or Mac Cassegrain, whatever you want, however you want to say it, uh, because it's e like so. Basically, it's going to compare, let's say, to maybe a four-point-five-inch pure refractor or four point, you know, somewhere between, and again, depends on the mirror and the quality, but, uh, you know, I can't say 100% uh, for every type, but let's just say between a 4.5 to a 4.7 inch refractor. That's what it's gonna kind of compare to. So it is pretty close. You're not gonna see drastic difference in these two when you zoom in on the planets and double stars, but this one, again, will be a little tad brighter and a tad sharper and have a little bit better contrast. Now, I gotta admit, I am slowly slipping into that refractor uh, as well. I have used 
almost every kind there is. Um, and I kind of like the refractors too, especially when you talk about planets. Uh, basically though, if, if, if I had to travel, then I would prefer this type of thing. Um, but if not, and I'm just observing the planets or something from my backyard, I prefer a pure refractor. But you guys tell me what you like. Is portability huge on your list? Or do you prefer as much ounce of starlight to reach your eye and just be the sharpest possible? Uh, anyway, guys, so that is the difference between these two, even though they're both five inch. This one is gonna outperform it by, I would say, five to seven percent. That's about all. Uh, sometimes you, our eyes cannot differentiate that kind of low, but just thought you new people should, should know. But if you're looking for ultra portable, and again, remember, this focal length on this guy is actually longer than this guy, so which means the same eyepiece on both of these telescopes, you're gonna get a little bit more power out of this guy. This little Mac Cass uh, or Mac Sutov here. So there is really no wrong, and this is probably why people who, is, who are in the hobby, I would say more than two years, probably have minimum two or three telescopes. You might have a refractor for the planets, you might have a portable one for when you travel or go to the cottage camping trailer or out of the city, um, and then you might have like a, what they call a light bucket or a big one to see galaxies and nebulas with. That's kind of, uh, and then sometimes some people might even want, because this one here, being 1500 millimeter focal length, the, the field of view, so the area of space that you see, is gonna be a tad narrow. Now normally when people get these, they're normally not looking for wide field telescope or views because it won't give it to you, right? This one could do it a little bit better because it's 300 millimeter focal length less. Um, and most Mac, Mac Sutovs normally, like the four inch, three inch and below, normally only have an inch and a quarter port. Although this one, uh, you, it does have a, well, you can put a two inch visual back, but the hole is not a true two inch diagonal. So the length cone is gonna be somewhat restricted. So you probably would get uh, a wider field of view if you put a two inch diagonal and nine piece on that guy than this guy. But again, the, most people get these is for high power and high contrast. This one will give you a bit wider field, a little bit, a uh, little bit sharper. Uh, but for daytime, you I mean, you could use this guy for daytime too. It just, of course, would be a little awkward being it so long but you can do it as well. Anyway guys, you guys pick which version you like, but these are two five inch. They're roughly around the same price range. They both are different type of um, telescopes and they do different things. You guys decide what's best for you. This is the medium range, meaning the five inch is, kind of, well for a refractor, you're almost getting to the limit. I would say the five inch is probably the max that most new people should get. Reason is, you can see how big it is. I do have a six inch refractor and a seven inch refractor. The size of it kind of goes almost 30% to go to the next size and then 30%. So really six inch is for serious people. And then seven inch is normally, even though I have one, is more for like observatory class. Uh, and this guy, you can, you know, it, it is not a, a big problem if you go six inch and seven inch because it's already small and lightweight. It becomes a little heavy at the seven inch, but it's still not huge. Uh, anyway, anyway, guys, that's it for me. Like, comment, subscribe on my YouTube channel. Uh, for you guys, if you know anybody who is wants to get into astronomy, share my link. You guys are on the forums and somebody's asked a question uh, maybe what's the difference between these two or uh, are these you know good for them S uh, share my link with them I would appreciate it why not you why not me